Chapter 71 You are listening at NovelFull.audio I put my hand on his face. His white face is cold. Please, bring a dry towel. Oh, yes. Mississippi. The surprised butler hastily brought some dry towels. One over Perez's wet shoulder and the other over his head, wrapped around him tightly. It's so cold. Why you went through all this rain? I feel like the rain will destroy all the flowers. Ah. Tia, you told me that Tia's father could heal only with this flower. Stupid. I grabbed Perez's hand and dragged him up the stairs. Still, he never asked a question, where are you going? He just kept quiet and followed my steps without difficulty. I took Perez back to my room. And sat him in front of the fireplace. Please make more fire in the fireplace. The butler quickly put some more firewood into the fire. What about Caitlin? Does Kylas know you're here? They probably don't know. I wonder, you didn't go out alone in the middle of the night to pick up Bonnia flowers as soon as you got my letter, did you? Dot. And since it started to rain, you didn't even think to stop and go inside, and I just kept crouching and digging there thinking that you had to dig up the flowers before they fell, did you? Dot. And you came here right after digging up the whole bamia and putting it in a wooden crate and waking up the driver without notifying Caitlin or Kylas. Isn't it, one Perez avoids my gaze with the flickering fireplace fire. First, send someone to the Imperial Palace. Please. No, Imperial Palace. Send someone to Poirac Palace. Perhaps by now, the palace was turned upside down knowing that Perez had disappeared. Perez was looking at me. Water was dripping down his black hair. I said while wiping Perez's hair with a towel. I'll apologize to Caitlin and Kylas later. Tia. Why? Because you have brought me Bombia flower. You were here to help me. But. Perez tried to say something but then closed his mouth again. Then he picked up the box he had put down on one side and hand over to me. But I shook my head. I'm going to check if your body is warming up. Perez thought for a moment at my words, then went near the fireplace and started drying his hair. Meanwhile, the butler who came back brought hot tea and hot soup and prepared dry clothes. Looks, it's warm now. Perez came over and said, putting his hand on my cheek. Like he said. Until a little while ago, his hands, which seemed to be cold and not bleeding, had quickly regained their warmth. So go ahead. He did not refuse. I took the box containing the Bamiya flower and asked Perez. Quickly changing your clothes and eating something warm. Um. Perez responded quickly, like a dog that listens well. I left the room. Only the sound of my footsteps and the rattling of boxes echoed in the dark hallway. My steps got faster. At one point I was running. When I arrived at Esther's laboratory in one of the annexes, it felt like it was going to burst out of my chin. Mississippi Florentia. Esther was still awake. The lights were on and the books were scattered all over the place, suggesting that she was researching drugs. I opened the box in front of Estra. I've got the Bamia flowers. Ooh, this is. Estra couldn't speak when she touched the red petals in disbelief. I handed the box to Estra. And I said it with the most earnest heart in my life. Now, save my dad, Estra. It only took Estra a few hours to create a new drug. At sunrise, Estra took it straight to my father. It's a new medicine. My father, which had worsened over the past few days, laughed bitterly when he saw the new medicine that Esther was offering. He didn't seem to be expecting much. Thanks for keeping on trying, Esther. My father was repeating those words while drinking with his left hand, which is the only limb that can move. I could have approached my father and said a few words, but I stepped back. Even if it's not, I don't want my sick dad to pretend he's fine because of me. I'd rather my father cry a little more and get angry. My father just laughed, 
until he was about to die. Just like in my last life. But. In this life, I know my father cry alone in his room in the middle of the night. Also, I know what caused my father's red swollen eyes the next day. I watched it from afar and quietly left my father's room. It was a room where Perez stayed near my house for a while. After moving in the rain for a long time, Perez might get cold. It wasn't serious, my grandfather who found out why he came to the mansion in the middle of the night, sent a letter directly to the emperor to let Perez stay as a guest of the family. How about Perez? He just drank his medicine and fell asleep. Kylas, who had received a call from the palace, answered in a low voice. When I quietly approached the bed, Perez was asleep with an unknown face. I looked at it for a while, then pulled on the blanket and dug into the seat next to Perez. Mississippi Florentia. Kylas came closer with his head tilted. It was a face that asked why I left my normal room and lied down here. I don't want to be alone right now. A very mean voice kept asking in the corner of my mind. Are you sure Bomnia is the correct answer? I don't know either. But if Bomnia really isn't the last piece, what am I supposed to do then? Can we find another answer in time? Can I save my father? My head was spinning once. My body, which had not slept all night, finally reached its limit. The warmth of Perez, which was subtly transmitted from a place not far away, seemed to soothe the heart. Finally, looking at the guy's black hair scattered on the white pillow, I fell asleep. Asterisk asterisk asterisk, Miss, Mississippi. Lural shook me to wake me up. I opened my eyes. The surrounding was all dark. Perez, who was sleeping next to me, was already up and standing in his new clothes. What's up? Lural's expression is strange. I jumped out of bed without hearing any answer. What's going on? I could feel with my skin that the atmosphere around me was chaotic. My heart pounded nervously. No way. No way. I quickly ran into my father's room. Many people had already come in. Grandpa and Aunt Shaninette, and even V's and Laurel. All the people of the Lombardy family looked at me. Why? Unfinished words came out of my mouth. L.O. I tried to read anything from the faces of those who looked at me, but it didn't work as if my head had stopped. I moved my heavy feet as if something was dragging them to the ground. Little by little, I moved closer to the bed. People made their way without saying a word. And finally, I could see my father on the bed. Tia. Dot oh, Dad. Hearing my father's cheerful voice, my legs loosened and staggered. Ugh. Everyone reached out to me, but it was my father who held my body. To be precise, it was my father's right hand. It was the hand that had been stolen by Tlenbru. How? It was stable. He was strong and did not tremble. Its bones were thin, but they kept me from falling. The new drug seems to be working, Tia. Dad said with a soft smile. After a few hours of drinking, my senses slowly returned. My father slowly opened and closed his right hand. I stared blankly at the gentle movement. Tia. My father called me. Dad, I think you're gonna be fine now. It was a smile of relief as if all burdens had been laid down. Dad. You're gonna be fine now. Took. I heard something popping inside me. Hmm. Unstoppable tears flowed point nine, daddy, daddy. Yes, my Tia. You were worried, weren't you? Dad. Dad, I'm fine now. It's okay. I jumped into my father's arms. A friendly hand patted my back. I didn't know how much I cried. Point four. All I remember is that I cried endlessly in my father's arms that day and that he always said, It's okay now. Point fifteen. And the only thing I heard was the voice of my grandfather saying, Thank you, to Perez. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. It was a perfectly sunny day. A pleasant breeze blew, and the grass was fresh. Outside, 
I could hear the band rehearsing, and the murmurs of greetings from the guests who had arrived in advance. I was dressing up in front of the dressing table with Lural's help. Miss, are you that happy? Yes. What? You don't know how to keep a smile on your face since before. Oh, is that so? I smiled contentedly when I saw my reflection in the mirror. Today is a special day, so it will take a long time to get your hair done. Be patient. Yeah, do whatever you want. I'm fine. At my relaxed reaction, Lural laughed as if it was nothing special. You're so bothered about getting your hair done. You must be in a good mood. Yups. I answered in a loud voice. Today is my 11th birthday. Finally, the day that I can freely enter and exit the mansion has come. Point one. Chapter 72 You are listening at novelfull.audio. My butt is shaking at the thought of going outside from tomorrow. Come to think of it, now you're free to look outside. Said Lural, combing my hair gently. That's exactly what I'm saying, Lural. What do you want to do first? Um. I needed some time to think. It wasn't to think about what to do. Because there was so much to do, it was difficult to prioritize what to do first. When I continued to ponder, Lural gave me some examples. Lorraine went straight to the flower garden outside Lombardy, and Gilu and Mehran went for a ride outside the castle. And Belsac. I don't know because I'm not interested, too also are Lural. It was a very good attitude. I don't know what Belsac did after his 11th birthday. It would be nice if I could think of it that way. But, living in the same mansion, it was a known fact that Belsac went out hunting with Astana the day after his birthday. As expected of Astana's number one followers point one ever since Belsac was free to go out, they had grown closer. So, what do you want to do, Mississippi? I, I want to go shopping. Are you going to buy? Are you talking about shopping? Yes. There are so many things I want to buy. Hmm, jewelry. Moreover, the mine where the gem came from. Or, delicious food. A restaurant that makes food. Sooner or later, there will be a very good sale. If not, leaving Lombardy and seeing the ecliptic would be fun. I'm planning to go to the emperor. I will do it all. Oh, my lady. You are greedy, too. Of course. Because I'm going to eat it all. I and Lural looked at each other and laughed. The finely combed hair was hung behind the back, and the side hair was pulled out and braided with beautiful white wildflowers. And with Lural's help, I changed into the dress I'm going to wear today. Dot, dot Mississippi. When did you say this will go on sale? Looking at the dress I was wearing, Lural asked with twinkling eyes. Next week. Did this one turn out well? I think it's the prettiest limited edition I've seen so far. Yups, I was very satisfied with Lural's enthusiastic response. Not long ago, the marketing I started at the Gallahan clothing store was working very well. It's called, Limited Edition. It is a way to break away from the image of ready dot to dot wear is a common thing that can be bought at any time and launch a new premium line targeting nobles. Galahan clothing stores all over the empire sell very expensive dresses all at once on the same day and at the same time, but the quantity is very limited. Only 200 pieces are released nationwide per series. Among the nobility these days, it is fashionable to collect this one-dot piece in addition to wearing dresses from Galahan clothing stores in their own way. Competition is so fierce in the royal capital, where there are many powerful and wealthy nobles, they sometimes send servants to buy from branches in distant places. By the way, this limited edition came out to commemorate my birthday, so it's going to be even more special. What, more special? I only made 100 pieces. I laughed wickedly. You are too much. You made such a pretty dress and only sell 100 pieces. Lural cried and dropped her shoulders. It's a limited edition with a fixed number, so I can't take one out for Lural. 
I thought about it for a while and decided to give her a small hint. Send Dillard's servant to the third branch, the third branch was relatively far from the residences of the nobility, but like the other branches, a limited edition of ten copies was to be delivered. So it could lower the competition even a little compared to other places. Lural, who understood what I meant, nodded her head meaningfully. Smart. Tia, can I come in? My father knocked on the door and poked his head out through the crack in the door. Dad. I got up in front of the dressing table and ran to my father's arms. Ouch. My father was joking, pretending to be pushed back, and hugged me, face to face. Now that you are eleven years old, my daughter still has a long way to go when she's all grown up. Absolutely. I'll be cute in front of my dad for the rest of my life. Thanks to Esther's medicine, my father was completely freed from Tlenbrew's disease. Within a week, the paralysis completely disappeared, and after about a month, he recovered enough to be able to take a leisurely walk around the annex. And today, my birthday, my father came back in perfect health, although he had lost some weight. Mr. Gallahan, you look great today. Ha <laughs> ha. Thank you, Lural. More like losing weight made his face sharper. My father's popularity is increasing day by day. I wondered if I would be able to meet my stepmother soon. Point 24, can you give dad a moment before going to the party? My father reached out to me. I grabbed his hand. My father's hand, which is still much bigger than mine, was warm and soft. Point when we headed to the annex. My father stopped in front of a door after walked along the long corridor. Open it. Dad said when he let go of my hand. Click. I turned the handle, the door opened gently. It's a gift from Dad to Tia. A large window filled with sunlight and a drawing dot room filled with soft and warm colors welcomed us. This. It's my room, is this my house? Yes. Wow. I ran and opened some of the doors to the drawing dot room. There is a bedroom, a small living room, and a study room. Tia's study in the main building has been moved here. I think this will be much more comfortable to use. It really was. All the books and writing instruments that were stained with my hands were moved here. From now on, Tia can use this house comfortably. Of course, if you came down more often, father wouldn't be so lonely. Dad. But considering that I will be busy in the future, this is better. Really. Dad can't lie. As I promised my father last time, I confided in things at the right time. It was simple things like, how did you send Seananette to Mrs. Suso, and, since when did you know Perez? But with only those pieces, my father seemed to have figured out most of me. It's been a while since I asked for your opinion on deciding what to do with, Galahan Clothing Store. The idea that was born like that was the, limited edition. Our Tia. My father hugged me tightly. Happy birthday. I wanted to be the first to give you a birthday present than everyone else. Thank you, Dad. I also hugged my father tightly. It's like a dream. That my father was with me like this on my eleventh birthday. The fact that my father overcame Tlenbra disease and was in front of me in good health. My father kissed my forehead with a lot of affection. I felt like crying so I hugged my father tighter. Now, I've reached the first goal I thought of after returning point one saving my father. But I still have a lot of work to do. Asterisk asterisk asterisk, let's start the meeting. The chairman, seated at the top of the table, focused his attention and said. There are some who haven't come yet, so please wait a little longer. Ferdic and Gina said slowly, putting his buttocks in his seat. But, it had been delayed a lot since the time the meeting started. The reason is, some of Anginas's close relatives have not come. Dozens of nobles who arrived on time and filled the conference room were waiting for them. There's no point in starting a meeting if important people don't come anyway. I came here thinking it was late, but it hadn't even started yet. What is this? A person was coming in leisurely, pushing both sides of the conference hall's door. 
Lo, Lord Lombardy. The chairman jumped up from his seat. Lulac Lombardy had previously been chairman for decades before the current chairman. What are you doing here? After a few years of rest, I'm trying to get interested in state affairs again. One, ah. Then the chairman. No, no. I didn't come here to take on such a heavy dot duty. I'm too old for that, I just came with a simple mind. If you have a simple mind. I have a promise to someone. Lulak answered and smiled at Ferdic Anginas, who was sitting opposite him. You will be thinking about it countless times in the future. Regret it, again and again. I shouldn't have touched Galahan back then, dot. Hiccup. He recalled what had happened in the Emperor's office, Lord of Anginas hiccuped in fear. Let's start the meeting. Is there any reason to keep this many people waiting for just a few people? The chairman glanced at Lord of Anginas. No matter how long Anginas flew, it was nothing compared to Lombardy. In the end, throughout the meeting, Anginas won nothing. It was all because of Lulak's interference. And the members of the nobility council, who had been suppressed by Anginas all this time, sided with Lulak. Lulak smiled and said to Ferdic Anginas, who had a poopy face. What? You're already in tears. There's a lot left to be upset in the future, six it was such a blatant laugh. Then I must go. Lord of Lombardy, if you have time, let's have a meal together. I'm sorry, but let's do it together next time. I have a very important job today. Ah, may you and your majesty. It's my granddaughter's birthday. Yes. I have to go to my granddaughter's birthday party. Gosh, it's late, for the chairman tapped the gavel twice as instructed with a blank face. It meant that the meeting was officially closed. Then I'll go first. The chairman was startled when he watched the wind blow through the conference hall, but he seemed to know one thing for sure. In the future, Anginas will not be able to set up as he pleases at the aristocratic conference. Chapter 73 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. My eleventh birthday party started. Point one Lombardy's banquet hall was full of guests. It was quite a big birthday party than my eighth birthday party, it's like doubled from before. The difference is, my grandfather deliberately invited people at that time, but this time, the party naturally grew bigger because many people wanted to come. It was all my father and grandfather's guests, but I didn't mind. Oh. Lady Florentia Lombardy. Is that dress coming in limited edition? Happy birthday, lady. You're so pretty today. The number of people who recognize me has increased. Hello, thank you for coming. Smiling gently at them, I looked around the banquet hall. A large fountain flows in the garden attached to the banquet hall. And next to it, I saw my father talking briskly with others. Ha ha ha. That's a brilliant idea. Now, he was more active than before he got sick. Green eyes sparkle when he sees the person he is talking to. He seemed very good at dealing with people with a relaxed smile. Maybe that's why there were so many people next to my father. Everyone seemed to listen to my father's words, jokes, and story. Happy birthday. Wow. Suddenly, something white and fluffy popped out from the side of my face. Gilu, Meron. You guys scared me, three they were twins playing with a big white teddy bear. Hee <laughs> hee. What are you surprised about, Tia? Now that they have entered a period of full growth, both of them are growing fast by the day. Long time no see. Hasn't it been a month since you came back here? Yeah, that right. I was bored to death. For the past month, the two have been on the Schultz estate. It was to spend time with their father, Vestian, for a vacation. There's nothing around. And the unpleasant atmosphere. We're in a terrible mood. The twins answered my question at the same time. I thought my father was a strict person, but he wasn't. My father was very docile compared to his relatives. No way, really. Especially at mealtime, there's a clatter of dish plates. 
There were ten of us eating together. I was suffocating. Maybe there was a lot of stuff piled up, but the two spat out complaints non-stop. If it was so hard, you should have come back halfway. You don't have to stay for a month. The Schultz mansion wasn't that far away anyway. Not long ago, the twins turned 15 years old, they were easy to move in a carriage point one but Gil Lu and Marin's reaction was a little strange. They sneak up on each other, then turn their backs. Come on, get your birthday present. It's a bear, especially from the Schultz estate. Hmm. It's very suspicious, but I'll let them fool me. I accepted the teddy bear. It's soft and fluffy, but it's not that impressive. They're not a twin who doesn't know me because I'm not interested in dolls. Why did they give this gift? While I was still staring at the teddy bear, Mehran asked in a mischievous voice. What do you think? Do you like a teddy bear? Yes, well. Thanks. But I'm not a rude person enough to complain about what you gave me as a gift. But Gilu tapped Mehran on the shoulder and said. Look, Tia wouldn't say anything. She's too nice for that. Oh, I thought you'd throw away the teddy bear. You're too nice, Tia. Gilu grinned and Mehran held his head in regret. I think they made a bet over my reaction to the teddy bear. Mehran sighed and said. Tia, if you don't like something, you should say no. You always think too much about other people. Did I? What do I do? You're too nice. Now Gilu joined. This not our gift. You have to look forward to something bigger. What's bigger? They don't answer my question, they just smile. What does Tia want? Me. If you ask me to tell you what I want, I can stay up all night. But I looked at my father who was having a pleasant conversation with people around him. I don't think I can hope for more today one it's because my father was still alive on my 11th birthday. Different from my previous life which I spent alone, for me it was enough to have a fun birthday party today. You can't do that. Mehran patted my head slightly and laughed. I'll buy you a real present soon, so let's go out with us. Yes, there are quite a few interesting places in downtown Lombardy. But it's dangerous for Tia to go out alone, so be sure to join us. How do you know I'm going to walk around alone often from now on? Tia. Mehran squinted and called me. Oh, right. They had a sharp sense. I nodded quickly. Just in case, you should never go around alone. Gilu told me, pretending to be quite an old cousin. How are you guys? A quiet voice asked the twins. Hello, Lorraine. Happy birthday, Tia. I put my present over there with other presents. Tia is so pretty. Thank you, I'll use it well. And Gilu, Mehran. I don't think they're the two people who can give Tia that advice. Lorraine said comfortably. No, why not? Who are the people who don't know that they are stuck in a mansion in the meadow for months from the day after the eleventh birthday party? Ha! Huh. The twins failed to refute Lorraine, though they did not speak loudly or reproachfully. I changed the subject of the conversation with a smile. Lorraine is getting prettier and prettier. I'm so jealous. It's not an empty word. With only two years left of adulthood now, Lorraine is truly blooming day by day. Just now, men of my age at my birthday party couldn't take their eyes off Lorraine. They must have fallen in love with Lorraine when their ears turned red. She like a pure lily. She was so pure and fragile that people were scared to see, so they wanted to protect her at the same time. People around me keep saying that. I really don't know. Lorraine's white face turned red. Lombardy is usually immune to this compliment. This was obviously a matter of innate character. But I'm glad Tia said that. Tia is getting prettier. Right. Tia is the best. A small face popped out from behind Lorraine. It was Crane, Astalius 7.year.old younger brother, 
with red beet dot like hair and a freckled face. Point two, after hiding bush and eavesdropping on my conversation with Perez, Crane had somehow become my fan. Point four, Tia is the best. Crane rushed in and hugged my waist. And looked up with clear eyes that seemed to shake hearts. Crane, you can't do that to Tia. We have guests here. Lorraine gently admonished Crane and kept him away from me. Wow. But Tia is busy, so I've only seen her for a week today as well. Strangely I'm used to faces with open eyes. I've seen that face before. But next to Crane, the twins started to grumble together. Right, Tia's too busy these days. You're in your study every day. I can't even see your face. Oh, it was you guys. I thought I'd seen it somewhere, and suddenly he's like a twin who was following me around. Sighing inwardly, I said to Crane. Crane, are you reading a book a week as you promised? Yes, I read all the books Tia lent me. Can I borrow it again? All right, I'll allow you to come to my study to borrow books from now on. Wow, I'm excited. I'm going to read a lot. First of all, early education is the best. I patted Crane on the head. Crane was incredibly bright it's nonsense that he was Astalia's brother, who seemed to have his head full of muscles. Point one before returning, the last news I heard was that Crane quite prominent since joining the Imperial Academy. When he was young, I felt sorry that he could have entered the Academy more prepared if he hadn't wasted his time with V's. But in this time Crane started to follow me rather than his brother Astaliu, and now I decided to help Crane a little bit. I'm thinking of changing the future of strangers, but there's no reason to pretend not to know Crane, who's a cousin and follows me well. When I pat him on the head, his smiling face is quite cute. And then I looked up. Ha! Huh. A boy who passed me was seen walking without knowing that he had dropped his handkerchief. Hey! A boy turned around at my call. You dropped this. The boy, who looked about the same age as the twins, alternately looked at his handkerchief and turned red. Point three, the, thank you. Lady Florentia Lombardi. Some of the kids who were interested in Lorraine just said that, and he's turning red. I held out his handkerchief with a grin, relax, I don't bite. And mine and the boy's fingertips slightly crossed. Oops. Surprised, the boy missed his handkerchief and was chasing it with his own eyes when it fell on the floor. A hand that appeared from somewhere grabbed a white handkerchief. It was an unusual rough hand among the nobles, with a lot of calluses. Here you go. Deep red eyes and darker black hair under the sun. Hi, Tia, one it was Perez. Chapter 74 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Hello, Perez. I was surprised. Why are you so tall? Were you this big? Perez was punished to self. Refined for his irresponsible behavior for leaving the palace alone in the middle of the night. Thanks to it, we haven't met in the meantime. We just exchanged letters like before. Growth period. Yeah, it's a growing period. That's why he grew up. But it's even more amazing, he was originally grown dot up when he kid, now enters a full dot fledged growth period. It's his 14th birthday soon, but now he's still 13 years old. In terms of height, he was as tall as the twins and their peers. You dropped this. Perez returned the handkerchief, I looked at him blankly. This isn't mine. It's his. Dot oh, really? Perez looked at the boy he was pointing at. SEC, Second Prince. Ah. The boy who lowered his head looked at Perez and was scared. For some reason, I wanted to see Perez's face, but I couldn't see well because of his black hair covered in sunlight. But I don't think there's much to it. It was a weak impression, but also his real personality. Take it. No. No, thank you. The boy, who refused to accept his handkerchief, turned blue and ran away. What's wrong with him? Well. Did he want to go to the bathroom? I'm sorry if we bothered you in a hurry. 
I tilted my head when I heard Mehran murmur next to me. He'd want to go to the bathroom. Even if it wasn't. Who? Perez asked when he looked at Mehran standing right next to me. But the atmosphere is a bit strange. The red eyes seem to have gotten a little darker. Maybe it's because I haven't seen him in a while. Or maybe it's in the shade. If I wasn't familiar with Perez's personality, I might say it was hostility. I'm Tia's cousin. Mehran Lombardy. And this is. Gil Lu Lombardy. Oh. Hi. As expected, I didn't see it well. He was just being shy. One Perez's face came back as I knew it. When I looked up at the sky, the sun, which had been slightly covered by clouds, shone again. I'm, Perez, one, I know. But this time, the twins' atmosphere was strange. Point one, it was a disapproving face that glanced at Perez. What's wrong with you two? The shy guy mustered up his courage and introduced himself first. Point one, you're not trying to be nice, are you? Well, it's not that. We're just. The twins raised their voices as if they were falsely accused. It's okay, Tia. Maybe they're being shy. Like me. Perez spoke advisingly. Ha. Huh. Ha, huh, by the way. The twins tapped on their chests. I glanced at them once and introduced Perez to another cousin. This is Lorraine. She's Belsaka's sister. Belsac. You've met my brother. Yeah, a few times. When Perez answered by tilting his head, Lorraine smiled bitterly. And this is. Crane, have you seen him? Crane was hiding behind me before I knew it. Well, it's worth being scared of. The last time he saw him, he cut down the tree. Did he? Perez didn't seem to remember Crane. I sighed softly and patted Crane's round little head, explaining. He's Estalia's brother. He was eavesdropping on our story last time. Estalia. Well, the big one next to Belsac. Ah. Only then did Perez nod, looking at Crane. Oh. Crane dug further behind me and hid. Hello, nice to meet you. Sorry about the other day. Perez slightly lowering himself. But it's not even close. Crane was still scared and wary of Perez. Well, let's go eat something delicious. Sweets, sweets. I said while pointing to the chocolate fountain in the distance. Wouldn't this awkward atmosphere be relieved if something sweet goes into their mouth? Thinking so, I moved on with the twins, Lorraine, Perez, and Crane, who was holding my skirt. Asterisk 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 Galahan was talking to the aristocrats around him and suddenly looked at his daughter. The child, who had been wandering around the banquet hall by herself a little while ago, was surrounded by her cousins and the second prince. They're heading towards the chocolate fountain. Seeing Florentia and the children walking together, Galahan quietly smiled a little. He prepared it carefully for Tia, who loves chocolate. A grumpy voice that broke the mood spoke. You're still extraordinary. Brother. It was V's and Galahan who met face to face after a long time. I can't believe I'm celebrating the eleventh birthday and a girl's birthday. V's clicked his tongue when he looked back at the banquet hall with a smiling face. Isn't it too much waste? Lombardy's hall is the only one I borrowed today. It's all with my personal expenses. Dot if that's the case. But even if it's your money, isn't it's too much? You're spending too much money, one, that's fine. What's the use of making so much money if you don't spend it on your beloved daughter? Point two, that's fine. Money has to be spent on bigger things. He tried to be patient in front of the crowd. Galahan's patience had now run out with V's continuing offensive remarks. How you spend your money depends on the person who makes it. What? I don't think I should get advice from my brother about money. 16 V's realized that there were a lot of eyes around him looking down at his anger according to his personality, so he stared instead. I almost died once, so I can see it. Yes. 
Galahan smiled, but he did not hide his hostility toward V's. Because I was bettered with a terminal illness, I saw clearly who was friendly and who was the enemy. After recovering, Galahan was the first to investigate who leaked the secret to Anginas. As a result, Dr. O'Malley, who diagnosed Galahan, opened his mouth on the condition that he would not be accused, and his testimony pointed to V's. When he heard that Galahan had Tlenbrough's disease, he laughed so cheerfully. Thanks to you, I feel my eyes open. Galahan made a ready dot to dot where business to protect Tia. And received an estate to hand over to Tia. He thought with satisfaction that it was enough for now. As soon as V's found out that he had an incurable disease, he tried to spoil everything. No, he took the ready dot to dot where business from his brother who was bedridden, and offered it to Angina's point one there was no more affection left as before in Galahan's eyes towards V's point one although it took a long time to distinguish between enemies and friends. Galahan was not soft enough to have an affection for those who once turned to the enemy. Galahan is the son of Lolak, inheriting many of his mother's figures. He had no intention of forgiving, and he had no intention of backing down like before. Point two, it's, it's. V said after coughing loudly. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sure you do. Galahan's tone was imbued with a faint sneer. This is a birthday party I held for my daughter. If you have anything you don't like, you can go back. What? Galahan, you're talking too much. Vs was upset, but Galahan let it slip away. And with a grin, he added. Goodbye, brother, seven the nobles around him laughed softly. They just couldn't laugh out loud in front of Vs. It was a fact that all central nobles knew that Vs, the eldest son of the Lombardy family, was a clumsy person somewhere. However, he did not openly ignore Lombardy because he had a wife from Anginas. Vs, who stood there and stared at Galahan, turned around and left the banquet hall, but Galahan didn't even look back. Asterisk 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 the atmosphere of the banquet had reached its peak. The music became more exciting, and more and more people danced in the middle of the banquet hall. There were times when adults filled the flow of pairs, and children who were not yet adults divided men and women and danced in groups. The twins and Lorraine, who were guarding me, joined it, and Crane was called to his parents. Why are you standing so far away? Perez, the only man, was four or five steps away from me. I said that before. I can't seem too close to you yet. Oh, that. I was worried that we'll be involved in the middle of the confrontation between the Empress and Grandfather, and the First and Second Princes. It's out of the question. What do you mean? I've become your supporter, and that's not enough, rumors have already spread that you saved my father. Besides, Angina's tried to take away my father's ready dot to dot where business. Already, my father, Empress, and Angina's were at odds. Grandfather seems to be very angry about it. Maybe that's why my grandfather returned to the aristocracy because of Angina's. Now that I look around the banquet hall, I can hardly see the people of the pro-Empress family, Anginas. Already, the nobles have slowly begun to set their course. One good thing was that Emperor Jovans was balancing the balance by weighing from side to side in the middle. It was a bit cumbersome. Because we were going to have a bad relationship with Anginas one day. I can't help it now that it's. I stopped talking and looked at Perez, who was next to me. Why? When I glanced, Perez tilted his head with a slightly brazen face. You're gonna regret it later. You're in trouble if there's a rumor that you're more than just friends with me, too, how come, too, because. Only once in my previous life, when I saw Perez mixed up among the people watching. Perez was not alone. Behind the horse dot driven by Perez with a cold face that welcomes everyone, there was a carriage that the woman was in point five anyway, don't do anything you'll regret later. I pat Perez's body away. No, I tried to push him away. But Perez didn't get pushed out with and was frowning somewhere. Chapter 75 You are listening at novelfull.audio. What's wrong with him? 
Perez, you know people are paying attention to us, right? I guess so. What do you mean, I guessed so? You are so calm. I decided to explain one by one. There was a reason why my grandfather was against being a part of you in the first place, right? If we did something wrong, we would be misunderstood as a marriage partner. Yes, I know. And I know that there are people who are constantly whispering about our future, as rumors have circulated that you saved my father, right? No. I didn't know that. Of course. He's Perez who doesn't care about people around him. But it doesn't matter. What? It doesn't matter. Oh, it's so frustrating that you're the only one who knows the future. Because he doesn't know what kind of woman he meets and how he falls in love with in the future point one you may be indifferent to whatever rumors are circulating right now. I sighed softly. As far as I know, that woman is like Perez's soulmate. Rumor has it that the two were like a match made in heaven, and were indeed a really good match. In addition, she was the person who helped Perez retake the throne. If such a person hears rumors and loses touch with Perez, it's a big deal. Even if I can help him become the crown prince, I cannot tolerate taking away the opportunity to meet such a precious person from him. I shook my head firmly. Rumors like that don't help you. Don't regret it, you'd better draw a clear line from now on. Tia. Perez calls me. I have no regrets. You'll regret it. I won't regret it. You were stubborn. It's all about you. You don't even know how I feel. I was so frustrated that I felt like I was going to burst, but I soon accepted it. He doesn't know the future, he doesn't understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I just have to be careful instead. But Perez is strangely quiet. Close his lower lip and turn his head to the side. Did you upset? There's no answer. He only steps on and takes off a leaf that has fallen to the ground with his toes. Hey, Perez. I slipped my shoulder, took a look at him, but soon flipped his head away. You must be really upset. Hold on a second here. I said that and scoured the table where the food was placed for it. It just so happens that not far away was what I was looking for. Eat this and let it go. Perez, still standing there looking sullen, I handed over chocolate cookies. But it's not just a normal cookie. Big chocolate cookies, bigger than my palms combined. He accepted it, and cut it in half, you eat, too. I think the one you gave me is bigger. I bit off half of the giant cookie. The sweetness spreads in my mouth and my tongue as the chocolate melts. Oh, it's sweet. It's strange for people to think that sweets are not good for their health and taste better. My body trembled with joy mixed with a sense of betrayal. Of course, sweets are the best when it's complicated. That when I opened my eyes as I was absorbed in cookies, I could see a smile on Perez's lips. That's good, isn't it? Yes, that's good. Perez smiled and nodded. Dude, you've relieved your anger. I patted Perez on the shoulder, which is now above my eye level. He's a little bigger, but he's still young. He's only 13, so it's obvious. Time will tell, Perez. What I meant by what I said now. I think so, too. Perez was more relaxed, and he agreed obediently. You'll find out in time. He said so and bit the cookie once again. Seeing his eyes twinkling, he must have liked the chocolate cookie quite a bit. I should pack it for him when he goes home. Oh, come to think of it. I have to go to the academy. Cough. Dot what? I was informed a few days ago. I'm afraid. It must be the will of Empress Rabini. I spoke with my voice as low as I could. It was an imperial academy, the object of dreams and envy for the common people, but it was slightly different for the aristocrats and the royal family. Successors to take over the family are not sent to the academy. That was a rule that was implicitly maintained. Heirs are raised in the family and taught directly in the family. However, 
those who had to continue their titles, such as their second and third sons, went to the Imperial Academy to build personal connections and gain knowledge. Therefore, the Empress wants to send Perez to the Academy and make sure that the Crown Prince's place belongs to Astana. I don't really want to go. Perez murmured. I understand, that mind. Going to the Academy could seem like a big setback if you wait and see right now. First of all, you have to live in a closed academy except for a very short vacation for a long time of five years. And in the meantime, Astana will win over the nobles. With a rival named Perez trapped in the academy. That's exactly what the Empress plan. She can't kill or harm Perez anymore. But this is just the result she wants. Perez in my previous life met his trusted side at the academy. Many indeed view the academy as the next best thing that those who fail to become successors reluctantly choose. In other words, it also meant that there were a lot of people who were pushed to the academy despite their abilities. There, Perez will pick out the unappreciated and talented person to his liking. Also, the academy is out of the Empress's reach. In any case, there were strict rules that were superior to the imperial laws except the emperor's imperial command, and the students were protected by that law. Considering all the reasons, Perez should be admitted to the academy. Is there any particular reason? The reason you don't want to go to the academy. That's it. Perez looks me in the eye when he tries to say something. Ruby dot like eyes sparkled in the light. Just. He didn't want to tell me why. It wasn't a straightforward reaction to everything, but it happens sometimes. Think about it slowly. I didn't push his back saying, you must go to the academy. Dot hmm. He also nodded with a mysterious look on his face. Asterisk asterisk asterisk, dot ah, my dear. Ah, I admire you so much. My life, my light, my heart, the rental. Thinking of you, my sun rises and the stars set, my beautiful darling. Don't forget this love. Let's have a great day together. Please don't forget. Clap clap clap. Julieta Avino's birthday performance, where opera tickets sold out day after day. While clapping, the nobles were surprised by the extravagant luxury. Even though I'm the granddaughter of the Lord of Lombardy and, Galahan Lombardy's daughter. They've never heard of such a splendid, grand 11. year. Old's birthday. Julieta Avino is sponsored by a clothing store. Someone whispered at Julieta's stage costumes as colorful as any customized dress. There's a rumor going around that it's not sponsored by the clothing store, it's sponsored by Galahan Lombardy. That's what they're saying. Oh, really? So did Julieta, and so did Second Prince. I guess it's true that Galahan Lombardy's is successful in anything he touches. How many times did the taxes increase within a month after the opening of the clothing store in Suso? Maybe we should not anticipate the succession of the throne, but rather predict Lombardy's next move. It's a matter of first or third. Everyone nodded in agreement with that statement. It seems that the imperial family has already started walking the tightrope. The eyes of the nobles who were talking reached Perez, the second prince. But still, can we beat V's Lombardy, who has Anginas as his wife? Well. Again, many people agreed. Galahan is very prominent these days, but the first son, V's could not be ignored. And Galahan Lombardy doesn't have a son to carry on the family, does he? He's still young, so there's a chance he'll have children in the future. But there's a saying that Galahan's daughter is especially loved by the Lord. No matter how beautiful you are, there's a limit to a girl. Sadly, that was correct. But. Then one of the crowds pointed to either side and said. Did Lulac Lombardy ever have such a favorite succession? There was Florentia, who ran with a smile, called Grandpa, and Lord of Lombardy, who held such a granddaughter and burst into a silly laugh from ear to ear. Oh, my. They don't know where to line up. The worries of the aristocrats who saw the granddaughter look so beautiful that they could not help themselves became deeper. 
asterisk 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 chirping. Even if no one woke me up, my eyes opened on their own. Outside, I hear birds chirping, cool wind, and sunny sky. It was a perfect morning. Wash up, change clothes, get dressed up, have a simple breakfast. There was no blockage in this series of events like water flowing. Finally, Lural, who was touching my clothes in front of the mirror, asked. It's the first day of freedom that you've been waiting for, what are you going to do today? Well, first of all. I walked to the side of the bed and took out a pocket that I had cherished in the drawer, plus jingle. Once you hear it, you'll a sound that everyone had no choice but to know. I smiled with delight at the heaviness of the money dot filled in my pocket. I'm going to spend some of my pocket money. The first day is shopping. Chapter 76 You are listening at Novel Full dot Audio. How long have you been collecting them? Lural approached and asked, picking up my pocket. I don't know. Ever since I came back. Most of my allowance is in Lombardi's bank, and this is part of it. Most of my allowance is in Lombardy's bank, and it's part of it. I suppose so. If you think about your allowance. After loosening the pocket strap and looking at the contents, Lural's voice stopped. Mississippi. Ha. Huh. Are you going to take all this money with you? Lural sighed softly. She seemed to think that I, who was unaware of the circumstances outside the mansion, had stored up ridiculous amounts of money. If you take half the money in this pocket. No, I need it all. But, miss, with all this money. I know, that's enough money to buy a building in downtown Lombardy. I know. Lural's expression was dazed by my words. How did you know that? There's a way to know everything. I've lived alone outside the mansion for years. Anyway, I take all the money I need. If you're going to buy dresses and jewelry, why don't you just write a bill in for Lombardy Mansion? You don't have to take cash like this. I never said I'd buy dresses and jewelry. I smiled at Lural, who tilted her head at my unpredictable words. Asterisk asterisk asterisk, you're finally going out. I got into the carriage wearing the plain, ready dot to dot wear from the Galahan clothing store, which was not decorated. In the meantime, I have sometimes gone to the palace by carriage with my father and grandfather, but it is the first time that I have gone out alone like this. No, I'm not alone. The day of going out with my miss has come. With Lural, who's more excited. Let's go to Lombardy Square first. The carriage began to move slowly when Lural passed my word to the coachman. A familiar scene flashed through the window. Not long after running down the boulevard from the Lombardy mansion, we arrived at the square. Lady, get off safely. Lural stepped down first and held my hand. Wow. Walking in the square after a long time was more amazing than I thought. Cool. The square, where many people are busy, and the statue of First Lombardy, standing in the middle, felt much bigger than I remembered. To be honest, Compared to the always quiet and neat Lombardy mansion, the scenery is not so beautiful. But there was definitely something energizing in the dust and loud noises of the wagons passing by. I said, taking a deep breath in the busy air of the square. Let's go over there. I grabbed Lural's hand and pulled her one side of the square. What's over there, lady? Yes, the most delicious bakery in the world. I walked off the boulevard along familiar alleys. Lural said it was her first time here and looked around, wondering. When I turned the corner, I saw the building I used to rent in the distance. A small room on the second floor of that shabby building was my home. Maybe now someone else is tired every night and is resting for tomorrow. And in front of it is the bakery where I bought fresh bread every morning. I couldn't stand the smell of sweet bread any longer, so I let go of Lural's hand and ran there. I happened to see Aunt Perry, who was displaying fresh bread. A younger face than I remember, but the characteristic warm and friendly face remained the same. Hello, ma'am. Ha. Huh. Yes, hello. I've never seen you before. Did you move in nearby? 
When I first moved in with a dangling bag after being kicked out of Lombardy's mansion, Aunt Perry welcomed me with this saying. Laughing as if you met someone who will be your neighbor for a long time. I'm Tia. Yes, Tia. You can call me Aunt Perry comfortably. What kind of bread do you want today? Oh, I can finally eat it. My heart pounded. I'd like two baguette sandwiches. Oh, I guess you've heard somewhere that our special menu is delicious. I've missed this sandwich for the past few years, which is not written on the menu and only regular customers know. Mississippi. How could you run like that alone? Lural, who followed late, gasped. Mississippi. Aunt Perry takes turns looking at Lural with round eyes. Oh, no. It's my step-dot-sister. I have an older brother who has a big age gap. Ha ha. Feel free to call me by my first name. Oh, you were the youngest in the family. No wonder you look so loved. Here you go. I could see the fat baguette cut in half and filled the sandwich with the ham and cheese that was sold at a nearby market. Oh, it smells good. It was a cheap sandwich that was no match for the food at the Lombardy Mansion, but I missed it so much. Goodbye. Yes, come back. Aunt Perry smiled and waved. A few steps out, Lural whispered in my ear. Miss, what if you eat something like this and have a stomachache? Don't worry about it. Try it, Laurel. It's really delicious. I opened my mouth wide and asked greedily. Yeah, this is it. Aunt Perry's sandwich while walking down the street. I missed you. Lural, a precious young miss of the Dillard family, hesitated at my ridiculous action. Well, it's out of a common sense for ordinary aristocrats to eat on the street. No matter how relatively free Lural is, she has never done it. If you're not going to eat, give it to me. Yum yum. At my words, Lural took a timid bite, confirming that no one was walking by. Dot oh, my. It's good, isn't it? Yes. Wow, it's so good. She takes two or three bites in surprise. Looking at that look, I began to eat the sandwich again. Oh, salty and savory. It's delicious. I should be a regular there. Lural said with a twinkle in her eye. I naturally walked to my next destination when Lural was distracted by the sandwiches. It was a noisy downtown Lombardy market. People buy and sell all kinds of things, such as fruits, food, and household goods. I don't go to the busy main street. I turned slightly and arrived at the new town next to it. A dark green building was seen on a slightly more orderly street than the market. It was Lombardy's second branch of Gallahan Clothing Store, which opened recently. Are you going to the clothing store? Yes, it's a new place. I'll take a look. I asked Lural to look at the clothing store where people kept coming and going. Let me check something out. Let's go in separately. And don't tell them my name unless people recognize me first, okay? Yes, Mississippi. When I opened the door, I saw the inside of a well-organized clothing store. It looks like this. It was the first time I'd ever come in person, I've only heard from Clarivan. The clothing store was similar to the clothes store I knew. They said women's clothes on the first floor and men's clothes on the second floor. I was checking one by one what I had only been briefed on in writing. At a glance, Lural, a noble young lady, was immediately followed by a staff member of a clothing store, but no one cares about me as a child who came alone. Hello, Mississippi. Are you here alone? It was about time I was a little disappointed in the customer service skills of the Gallahan clothing store. A gentle voice spoke to me. It was a woman with black hair and purple eyes. I didn't come alone, I'm waiting for my dad. Oh, I see. Then if you need anything, you can call me anytime. The woman smiles at me, then goes to another guest and starts a conversation with a friendly smile. I watched the staff working when I was looking at clothes in a clothing store. 
It was then that a loud voice came in. No, I just bought it. A middle-aged man was arguing with an employee with an angry face. Why don't you trust people? There were about ten neat navy dresses piled up in front of the man. It seemed like a person who refunded clothes, how dare you call the Levartan family a liar. Really? The middle. Aged man spoke high dot handedly, raising his chin. When eyes gathered around him, the staff of the clothing store blushed and forced his head down. It's not that. I'm sorry, I'll give you a refund. That's the way it is. The smiley man's face fell a little fishy. Something feels odd. Eventually, it was when the employee tried to make a bill worth the price of the clothes and give it to the man. Excuse me for a moment. The woman who talked to me smiled when she gently blocked the staff. Hello, I'm Violet and I'm in charge of the Lombardy branch. You said you were from the Levartan. Well, isn't it? Are you, then, the butler of the Levartan family? Comb, I wasn't going to reveal it. That's right, the man frowned, speaking in a dithering way. Our clothing store makes a document called Receipt for Every Transaction. The same goes for a pair of gloves. You just bought 40 of these clothes and you said you wanted to get a refund for 10 of them. Then you have to bring those 40 receipts. I've never heard of that before. If you were a butler, of course, you would know that. She still looked smiling, but Violet's smile was cool. The man, looking disappointed, quickly explained. Wow, it's my first time dealing with a clothing store. The Levartan you mentioned are not here, they have made three deals with us at the Lombardy headquarters. I'm sorry but I've never seen your face before. Excuse me, can I have your name? I, I mean. It. The man gritted his teeth and ran out of the clothing store, staring at Violet. Whoa. Sighing softly, Violet quickly regained her smiling face and apologized to the guests. I'm sorry, sir. An employee who had been tricked into paying the man approached and told Violet. It's okay, but make sure you check the receipt next time. And keep in mind the information about the family you deal with frequently. Did you forget that the Levartan had a thief a few days ago? Ah. That's what happened, right? I smiled inwardly when I watched Violet patting the grieving employee on the shoulder. All right, that'll do. It was when I was so satisfied. Violet, who checked out the window at the sound of the carriage stop, approached me and lowered her waist to meet my eye level, and said. Your grace has arrived, Lady Florentia. Chapter 77 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. I, you know me. I've never actually seen you, but I've heard a lot about you and memorized you. You didn't seem to want to show up a little while ago, so I'm sorry, miss, she is very thorough. As expected, it's like Violet Lip. I smiled and reached out one hand to Violet to ask for a handshake. Nice to meet you, Violet. Did you know my name? Violet opened her eyes wide. I heard it a little while ago, and I tend to memorize important things when it comes to clothing. Oh my. Violet smiles softly. But her sharp eyes are constantly trying to read me. Violet Lip. In my previous life, she was Clarivan's right dot hand man and the second dot in dot command of the Pellet Traders Company. Clarivan's genius was important to Pellet's brilliant growth in a short period, but Violet's meticulous management was also important. If Clarivan took the lead and led the business boldly, Violet was a fantastic duo that managed everything meticulously behind the scenes. Without a person named Violet Lip, there would have been no Pellet Traders Company that had risen like a comet. Looking at how she was doing her job a while ago, I don't think there's any need to worry about being younger than Violet of that time. Would Grandfather have felt this way when he saw great people? I smiled heavily at Violet. Tia. Then I heard the sound calling me. It was my father who was just entering a clothing store. Dad. My father's eyes were round with a dumbfounded face when I ran and hugged him. How can you be here? 
because I can go outside from today. Yes, that right. My father smiled in vain while patting me on the back. I can't believe the day when I meet you outside like this has come. The muttering father's voice became bright by his daughter's growth. My father is too. How did you know dad was here? My father usually goes to work at his office in Lombardy's headquarters or the capital's branch. This branch was one of the places my father often visited not long after it was opened. Sir. Clarivan told me. Just in time, Clarivan came in and handed over his jacket to a clothing store employee. Sir Clarivan. Clarivan, who received my father's attention, explained with great hum. She wants to surprise you, Sir Galahan, and Lady Florentia asked me about the schedule. I see. Ha <laughs> ha. Dad, shall we go outside? I asked while holding my father's hand. That would be great. My father looked around and nodded. It was because everyone in the clothing store was looking at us. Who's making all this noise? It wasn't such an unpleasant stare. Rather, they seemed to have bumped into a famous actor or entertainer and whispered among themselves in surprise. I can't believe I actually saw that famous Galleria Lombardi father and daughter. You're so cute. The man back there, then, Mr. Clarivan Pellet. The murmur was growing so loud that I could hear their conversation. Let's go eat something delicious. It's lunchtime anyway, so I can interrupt my father's work a little bit. When I said so, my father nodded with a big smile. So, Tia, what do you want to eat? Where should I go? The list of famous restaurants that I wanted to go to after returning but had to endure crossed my mind. Asterisk 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 unlike his appearance, which seems to enjoy fruit or light vegetarian food, my father was thoroughly meat.eating he was very satisfied with the restaurant I guided him to. In my previous life, I used to come here with a big heart when my salary came in, it was not a too luxurious place, but they roast large chunks of meat in the oven were excellent. Come back here later, miss. Lural was happy, too. Dot but Clarivan was a little different. But Clarivan's reaction was a bit different. Are you all right, Sir Clarivan? After putting down the fork without eating well, I asked Clarivan, who was wiping his mouth with a napkin. I was wondering if he was sick. That's fine. It just doesn't suit my taste. Oh, no, bro, sir. Clarivan doesn't like meat very much. Lural habitually tried to call him brother but realized it was outside and said correctly. Ha. Huh. He looks like a meat dot eater. You took a bite of the bloody rare steak, chewed on it, and then you drank the red wine and looked like you were laughing. That that's a very specific example. But I don't really like meat. I didn't know either. When my father cut the meat into large pieces, he was shocked. Then what kind of food do you usually like? I like light salads or seafood. Based foods. But there aren't many restaurants like that, so I usually cook, too. Do you cook? One, it was a series of surprises. When he got home, I thought he would leave his homework and go straight to bed. I can't believe such a person cooks at home. Then, hold on. I ordered one more food from the menu. It is a fresh salad mixed with freshly trimmed seafood and leaf vegetables, and it was a popular menu here besides roast. Wow. Clarivan, who took a bite without much expectation, was surprised. It's delicious, isn't it, Clarivan? Yes. Thank you for your concern, Lady Florentia. It's good to have a nice meal together. Obviously, it's nice to see Clarivan, whose meal speed has changed from a while ago. I rested my chin with one hand and watched my father, and it looked like my father's meal was almost done, so I picked it up. Dad. Clarivan, give it to me, too, cough. Cough. For some reason, father and Clarivan were heard simultaneously. Dad, are you okay? Clarivan is here, too. I handed water to two people who coughed. Well, cough, what the hell do you mean, Tia? My father asked, 
still chilling with his mouth covered with a napkin. Then, unlike my father, I stare at Clarivan with fierce eyes. Point one, Sir Clarivan. Explain. No, I, uh. There's some misunderstanding. Clarivan was wiping the sweat off his forehead with a napkin wiping his mouth. I cut in and explained before further misunderstanding. Literally. I need your help from now on. Clarivan, did you resign from my grandfather? Yes, I resigned yesterday. As mentioned earlier, Clarivan arranged his employment relationship with my grandfather. Grandfather seemed a little shocked, but I heard that he said to Clarivan, if you need anything in the future, just tell me. My father now stopped coughing and was looking at me and Clarivan with serious eyes. It'll be possible to work and work at the clothing store for a while. But later. Speaking of which, I felt a little sorry for my father. Starting a new job with me was definitely a better opportunity for Clarivan, but he's my father who's been running the ready dot to dot we're business together. Yes. That's fine, sir. Clarivan. But my father's answer was simple and clear. The clothing store is stable now, so it should be fine. Tia needs more help from Clarivan than I do. My father doesn't fully know about my relationship with Clarivan. It just seemed to him that I was determined to get something started with the help of Clarivan. Considering my age, it was the most reliable. No one would think I would take the initiative in doing business with Clarivan at the forefront. Please take good care of Tia from now on, sir. Clarivan. When my father smiled and said so, Clarivan nodded. Fortunately, my father and Clarivan were on their way back to the office to rest after completing all their schedules. Father had to discuss a few more things with Violet, but Clarivan had done all his work. So I took Clarivan and Lural to my third destination today. It was a busy street not far from the Gallahan clothing store. However, it was a place where a lot of carriages passed by because it was somewhat far from the market and the boulevard was wide open. Among them, I led the two people to a three. Story building on the corner. This is it, Lural. Yes, that's right. The previous owner said he was waiting here. Oh, there he is. Lural approached a middle dot aged man, greeting him gladly. Where are we, Lady Florentia? Clarivan looked around and asked me. You'll find out soon enough. The man called, the former owner, led us to the first floor of the building. Already, everything was emptied and there was only a small table inside. And he took a contract out of his arms. Most of it was already written, and only a few blanks and the last signature were left. Now, what's the name of the new owner of the building? Lural, questioned, looking at me. You can write, Clarivan Pellet. Dot Mississippi Florentia. I could hear Clarivan calling me from the side, but I didn't look over there. Clarivan Pellet. Well, it's all done, so pay the balance and sign here by a man named Clarivan. The man signed the part with his name on it and put down the pen. Here's the balance. I put my pocket down on the desk and said. It was my pocket money bag that I brought from home. Cash. Let's count for a second. While the master counted the gold coins in my pocket, I turned to Clarivan. This will be our office from today. But why did you name me? Because this building belongs to Clarivan. But. I'm Lombardy, so my grandfather will know all the buildings I've acquired. Late or early. I can't do that, so it's right that Clarivan is the owner of the building. Is that right? But apart from that, this building really belongs to Clarivan. It's a gift to do well in the future. Clarivan stood still for a while, unable to speak. Meanwhile, the former owner counted all the coins and confirmed that the balance was correct. Come on, Clarivan, sign. Plus I handed over the pen to Clarivan. After taking it and rolling it in his hand for a while, Clarivan soon wrote down his name without hesitation. Thank you, miss. After signing, Clarivan looked at me. The former owner, who finished the contract satisfactorily, 
put the contract back in his arms and looked back at us and asked. Oh, and. When I report, I have to register the name of the building here with the government office. What are you going to do with it? Pellets. I answered. After the last name of Clarivan Pellet, please report it as Pellet's Shop. Chapter 78 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. A guest was visiting the Empress Palace today. It was her father, Anginas, the lord of the family. What did you just say? Rabini turned around and stared at the lord. Julieta Avino, did she sing at Lombardy's banquet? The Empress's accumulated anger at Julieta, who rose rapidly as an opera singer and recently became the Emperor's new lover, was considerable. Point 12, however, the fact that Julieta's performance at the banquet of her rival Lombardy finally exploded. Arc. Screaming, the Empress began to throw everything. There were no exceptions to the vase made of transparent crystals, and to the teacups and teapots that the maid had just brought in. It was not until the floor of the parlor was messed up with dozens of sharp clang, that the Empress stopped having seizures. Sigh, sigh. Her hair, which had been neatly twisted and tied, came out and shook at every harsh breath of the Empress. That bitch, she's got Lombardy's line. Flop, said the Empress, sitting on the drawing dot room sofa, clutching her armrest. I think it was the beginning of a promotional model for a Galahan clothing store. Yeah, I guess so. The Empress bites her lips. It wasn't because of the Emperor's unclean reign. It was such a relationship from the beginning, they were. Even Rabini had a few lovers who met secretly. Since they were a couple who were strictly exchanging things with each other, having an extramarital relationship did not mean to be angry. However, it was a different story if it compromised her position in the aristocratic society. The countless women who passed through the emperor were no match for Rabini. Rather, good buds were seen among them, and those who knew how to obey the empress were kept by her side and served her. Env but Julieta wasn't that kind of thing. She likes to be noticed everywhere, and she wanted to be the center of attention. The problem was that the attention and gaze should all belong to Rabini. I'll have to work on it soon. At the cold Rabini's words, Anginas's lord lowered his eyes quietly. Rabini's cruelty sometimes gave even his father goosebumps. The plan is going well, isn't it, father? Yes, Empress. You have to put it in our hands. You never know when you'll miss this opportunity again. Rabini's eyes blazing as if they were a burn in fire. The Empress is right. Lord of Anginas closed his mouth and lifted his own teacup left alone on the table. Asterisk 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 after a long time, the Lombardy family sat in one seat. It was Lombardy's family dinner. As usual, children and adults were divided into two tables. Lorraine and Belsac had already arrived. I greeted Lorraine with a smile on my face. Hello, Lorraine. Hi. And Belsac sat down without saying hello. And then Estaliu and Kane brothers arrived. You sit over here. Estaliu roughly pulled his younger brother to the seat next to him. Crane's face, which was shaken by the wind, is all teary. Maybe it's because he doesn't want Crane to hang out with me. It was obvious that his brother, like him, was thinking of making Belsac as smart. I'd like to sit over there. Crane murmured, looking next to me in a tearful voice. But Estaliu frightened Crane with a scarier face. Sigh. I said with a sigh inside. Crane, come here. When Crane heard my call, he rejoiced and watched Estaliu for a moment. It's okay, so come here. After a moment of hesitation, Crane eventually ran and sat next to me. I whispered in Crane's ear. If Estaliu bothers you in the future, you can run to your mother. Okay. Ronit hated Estaliu's use of violence against Crane. Perhaps even now Estaliu is gently picking on Crane, avoiding his mother's notice. Yes. Crane still looked at Estaliu with anxious eyes, but he smiled brightly and nodded. Ugh, I guess I'll have to play with him more often. 
In fact, playing with a stallion doesn't give Crane any good. It's just a negative effect. Crane sat between me and Lorraine, who poured water in front of Crane, whose arms were still short, and gave him a variety of things. Hi, Tia. The twins joined the table. But the faces of the two were not very good. I think it was like this last time. What's wrong with your faces? It was so gloomy that I felt uneasy about it. That's. Mehran hesitated for a moment and saw Gilu nodding his head small and said. My father and mother have been having a bad relationship lately. They. Shananette and Vestian, who have enough sesame seeds to tell them to go away. They've never fought in front of us. But today. They had a little big fight. The twins said in a low voice. What made them fight like that? I don't know, but I thought it was about the family. Lombardy and Schultz have been used a lot. A quarrel between the names of both families. That's why you were in Schultz for so long last time. You, uh. Ha. Huh. Maybe they too need a little distance. Mehran said quite calmly. I just hope I don't have to choose between my parents, one Gilu also said half resignedly. Oh, come to think of it, it's around this time. It occurred to me that Shannonette and Vestian had divorced. I looked at the table where the adults were eating. Shannonette was eating in silence with a pale complexion, but Vestian looked a little different than usual. Laughing and chatting non-stop, it was just the way it was. It was the two people who contrasted perfectly. Then, my father was seen saying hello to my grandfather when he finished eating. He was busy today, so he asked for their understanding and got up first. My father smiled at me for the last time and left the dining room. And then I could see V's following. Asterisk 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 Gallahan. Gallahan, who was busily on his way to work, turned around at the unwelcome sound of calling him. It was V's. I haven't received your apology yet. You have called someone in a hurry just to ask for an apology. Gallahan sighed inside and said. I've never done anything to apologize for, brother. Don't you remember kicking me out of the banquet? I've never kicked you out of the banquet. You said you didn't like Tia's birthday banquet, so I just told you to go away. V's face quickly turned red. Once he was afraid of that fiery personality. But Galahan now felt sorry for such a big brother. He learns that uncontrollable anger will only make him look funny. You. V's pushed his face forward threateningly, but Galahan remained silent and didn't back down or move forward. I think you're being so self-indulgent, trusting our father. How long do you think he's gonna be fine? Galahan doubted his ears. And he felt a sense of gloom. Vs was really blinded by a desire for power. To the extent that he does not hesitate to ruin his father, Lulak, for the second time. Galahan is once again determined. This time, he was awarded the Cheshire territory with the medal. Brother. Galahan said calmly, but with caution. I'm not interested in Lombardy at all. And I think you know that very well. V's winced small, but there was still alertness in those eyes. Point one Galahan continued with a sigh. I'll get out of this mansion in due course. Are you serious? I don't know if this Lombardy is the most valuable thing in the world to you, but I have no intention of letting my daughter live in this mud. Tia is more precious than anything else in the world. So Galahan intended to separate his daughter from Lombardy's blood relatives. Point five freely, humanly breathe, and live. So don't touch us. I warned you. Galahan stared at V's for the last time and turned his back and walked away. Left alone, V's felt very displeased with her brother's impertinent attitude, but he still accepted the surrender statement. He didn't expect it to work out so easily. He can't believe he's not interested in the title. Point six. It was as cool as a sore tooth had fallen out. A satisfied smile came naturally. This will prevent Galahan from fighting for the air. 
V's believed there were no more competitors left. Point 26 asterisk asterisk asterisk, congratulations on your opening, teacher. I held out a small flower pot from the garden to Clarivan on the way here. The newly hired employees of the company smiled at me for my cuteness. Externally, Clarivan valued my potential so highly that he kept teaching me even though his employment contract with Lombardy ended. It was a measure not to let anyone think it was strange even if I went to the boss often in the future. I'll find a place for the pot. Suddenly, the staff quickly took the flower pot from my hand. Well, shall we go upstairs? Clarivan led me to the third floor of the office. When I entered the office, I saw Violet, who was waiting for the tea in advance. This time, she was an important member of Pellet's company, which I told Clarivan to bring. Click. The door closed and there were only three of us left in the office. And I naturally sat at the top of the table. Now that we've opened our business safely, we need to set our first goal, right? At my words, Clarivan and Violet nodded with serious faces. A sense of pride came over him as if he had won thousands of horses. I cleared my throat with a cough and opened my mouth. Our pellet's first goal is mining. Chapter 79 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Mine Violet asked back blankly. Yes, mine. I'm going to buy a mine in the name of Pellet Company, Violet. Oh, yes. The answer was yes, however, his face showed that she didn't understand. That's understandable. I know, mines are expensive. That's right. A mine has a similar price to a single estate. Depending on what is buried, there are times when the difference is several times. I'm sorry, Lady Florentia. Violet raised one hand carefully. What kind of mine do you have in mind? It's a coal mine. Oh, I don't know if that's possible. Violet seemed to be calculating the amount of money I gave her when I opened this pellet company. I'm not going to use the pellet company's money, Violet. But even a relatively cheap coal mine would cost a thousand gold. The monthly wage of ordinary workers without special expertise is about three silver. And when forty silver pieces are gathered, they are worth gold. In this situation, I get eight gold per month just by breathing as Lombardy point seven after adulthood, this money rose to twenty gold. Of course, the money I need to live a basic life is one thing. Since I was born, this money has been steadily piling up in my safe at the Lombardy Bank. After my father's ready dot to dot where business started and made Clarivan my man. I left all the money I had saved to Clarivan and invested it at the Gallahan clothing store. And the result, of course, was very successful. Clarivan, do you have enough money? I looked back at Clarivan, who was enjoying tea scents and asked. Well, it doesn't matter if the price of the mine doesn't exceed 3,000 gold. If it goes beyond that, it takes about a month to raise funds. We have to make it cash. That's fine. Violet looked stunned when she heard me and Clarivan talking casually. 3,000 gold. He murmured quietly as if that money wasn't real. I guess she still needs a little time to get used to it. Anyway, if we're going to carry out the businesses we're thinking about in the future, we should take this opportunity to raise funds. With this single investment, Pellet Company will be one of the best in the empire. I assure you. Clarivan asked me, smiling significantly. You have a mine in mind. As expected, Clarivan. He's good at reading my mind. An old coal mine in the Lira region in the northwest would have been auctioned off. It belongs to the Lencanta family. The size of the mine itself is quite large, but the expectation of the amount of coal left over is very low. In my previous life, the story of the Lira mine was quite famous and was talked about for a while to shake the entire empire. The Lencanta family, which owned the Lira region, did not harvest properly due to the continuing drought. However, they had to pay fixed taxes to the royal family every year, so they borrowed a fortune from other nearby families. In order to pay off the increasing debts, the coal mine, one of its old assets, is auctioned off. 
It's such a poor coal mine. The last time they did mining was decades ago. But, a gemstone, which had never been found before, is buried beneath this old coal mine. A gem that, when polished by a proper craftsman, is the kind of jewel that everyone aspires to obtain, regardless of the imperial family or aristocracy. At that rate, it would be a successful bid with 1,000 golds. Violet, who seemed a little alert, said in a cautious voice. If we don't have a competitor, we might be able to lower 600 gold. Clarivan was also optimistic. But I shook my head. 2,000 gold. The original winning bid was 1,800 gold. I was just going to put 200 gold higher. It was a simple auction where each person was given only one chance to bid, so it was easy to win the bid if you knew how much the other person would spend. You'll have to spend about 2,000 gold to win the bid. What? Two people were surprised. It's not worth 2,000 gold for an old coal mine, Lady Florentia. Clarivan stopped me. Of course. If it was a newly discovered coal mine, there would still be a lot to be excavated. 2,000 gold is too much. You said it a little while ago. If you don't have a competitor, you can lower the price. That was what Clarivan said a little while ago. There will be competitors on the contrary, so we can't help but go up in price. No matter how competitive they are. Anginas will bid for it. In my previous life, it was Anginas who won the mine and hit a huge jackpot. It was thanks to the jewels found in Lyra that Empress Rabini continued to maintain her power and bribe the nobles to empower Astana even though her relationship with the emperor gradually deteriorated. The office became quiet. Then Clarivan gulped. Certainly, if you're going to deal with Anginas, you're going to have to risk that much bleeding. Anginas has recently been rapidly growing in size with aggressive investments in mining. Maybe it's not just a coal mine. Why do you think so, Violet? Angelus already has enough coal mines. Even if there's a coal vein that hasn't been discovered yet, there's no reason for Anginas to overdo the cost of development. Violet with her fingers on her chin began to think aloud. But it's common to secretly send a specialist to re-evaluate the mine before you go to auction. You may have other information that the Lencantas don't know. I watched Violet's deduction with pleasure. Gold mines. But gold mines will be more aggressive. We'll have to get it somehow. However, considering that the winning bid is ambiguous, I don't think they want to show it as much as possible. And I could see one realization on Violet's face. Dot. But Violet rather shut her mouth. So I told it on behalf of her. Iron ore. But iron ore. It's an unauthorized possession to Anginas. Iron ore, a military resource, was mostly subject to the imperial monopoly. When iron ore was found in their lands, they were often rewarded to the imperial family, raised the title, or granted another land. Of course, Anginas did not do that. They did not release the mine because of the low iron reserves, and officially became a family that owned an iron. But what I want is not iron ore. In the first place, iron reserves are small. Of course, it has a separate use. For now, the rest of the story is told after winning a bid for the mine. If I pour out all my plans now, I will only add to the confusion between Clarivan and Violet. That I stood up and instructed Violet. Find out about the Lyra coal mine, Violet. Yes, Lady Florentia. Violet's eyes burned with a firm will, as it was her first task from me. And Clarivan comes out in a few days to visit the capitals, jewels found this time cannot be handled by ordinary jewelers. You need a very experienced and talented craftsman in the empire. Only in their hands will the gemstone shine. Now that I've stolen it from Anginas, I plan to get it right. Anginas, who will miss the mine right in front of his nose, had a stomachache and rolled around. Lombardy repays the good tenfold and the evil of his enemies tenfold. Well, you should keep it in your heart. 
who's trying to steal my dad's business. Point two asterisk 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 early in the morning, I left for the capitals with Clarivan. Of course, the tour of the palace with my teacher. I dressed up with a little more care than usual. On my neck, I wore a flower dot shaped necklace carved out of a whole ruby from Perez. It's easy to move around as the highway used by thousands of people every day is well dot maintained from the Imperial Palace to Lombardy. Before long, we arrived at Setacuna, a bustling area mainly used by the nobility in the Imperial capitals. Our first destination was a bakery called Caramel Avenue, which opened recently in Setacuna. It was a popular place because of the old dot fashioned atmosphere with good use of marble and charred wood decorations. I left her alone on purpose today, but Laurel was also a huge fan of this place. Welcome. A neat dot looking employee greeted us with a smile. It was an impressive employee with deep amber eyes, with curly brown hair brushed off nicely. My name is Bate, an employee of Caramel Avenue. May I show you upstairs? Display and sales were available on the first floor, while dessert and tea were available on the second and third floors. No, I'm going to buy a cake. Yes, then I'll take you over there. The more I looked at it, the better it was for dessert shops. I stood behind bait in front of a display stand with more than 30 different kinds of desserts. Hmm. Everything looks delicious. It's hard to choose. I knew it. Don't worry about it. Give me everything. Yes. Bait asked with a smile on her face. I can't choose. Please give me both two desserts on display here. The famous, from there to there, shopping law. Oh. Please divide the packaging into two. Being rich is the best point six. I watched the interior of Caramel Avenue, waiting for it to be packed. I'll pay the bill. Clarivan stepped up and said. Yes, go ahead. It's going to be handled by Pellet's expenses anyway. But Bate, who was going to give the bill, stares at Clarivan's face. Point one, what is it? Oh, no. I'm sorry. May I help you with the bill? When offended, Clarivan asked, Bate, smiled, and quickly apologized. Take one of the packages home and eat it with Lural, and send one to Perez through the top of Lombardy. Is it possible? Yes, Lady Florentia. Then I look away, and Bates amber eyes look at me like she saw Clarivan a while ago. I smiled softly. Go, sir. Clarivan. Yes, Lady. Clarivan followed me with two large boxes of cake in both hands. And the gaze of Bate, an employee of Caramel Avenue, followed persistently until we got on the carriage. Chapter 80 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. There's Ivan Family Store in Setacuna, right? Yes, in the next alley. Let's go there. The Ivan Family in the North, which I encountered when my father received the National Founding Medal, is famous for minerals. Since it is a mountainous area, no mineral does not come from gold to graphite and coal, which are commonly used throughout life. Especially, the jewels in the Ivan area were famous for their luminosity and egg size, so they ran a store directly in Setacuna. It was a place where jewelry from the Ivan territory was sold only by skilled jewelers. So the shop was always crowded with nobles, and today too. People busily moved in and out of the door under the bright sign that read Ivan. And here is the craftsman who made the gemstone the most beautiful gem in the world that no one has ever successfully honed. Go in, Lady Florentia. Clarivan grabbed the door and said. When I went inside, I saw people sitting around a large store, receiving counseling, and buying jewelry. Some of them accidentally turned around to me and whispered among themselves. The kid who just came in. Lombardies, right. I think that's right. Thanks to the national founding banquet and my birthday banquet, some people recognize me. As long as I was born Lombardy, it is inevitable. I walked in front of the innermost display in the eye of the people. A man in a uniform standing under bright colorful lights appeared to be in charge here. 
Welcome, Lady Florentia Lombardy. As expected, you know who I am. In dealing with these nobles, it is competitive to know the personalities of important people in advance. Those were the first things I studied when I was next to my grandfather. Information such as the family tree of high dot ranking aristocratic families in the east, west, south, north, and center of the empire and the relationship between important figures. It's your first visit to Ivan's store. Did you already know about me? I nodded slowly and said to the man. I'd like to see specials, not the ones here. The special item I asked for was not made by ordinary jewelers, but by Ivan's craftsmen. The man paused slightly with a smile on his face and looked at Clarivan standing behind me. Is he with you? He knew me, but not Clarivan. Clarivan replied with a slight frown, perhaps feeling it. I'm Clarivan Pellet. Well, if Lady Lombardy guarantees your identity, you can come in with her. The man spoke softly and opened the door leading to the inside. Clarivan, who was treated as an unidentified person, seemed emotional. Clarivan, who succeeded his father, Romassi Dillard, in my previous life was a very famous man, but not yet. Clarivan himself tends to be buried because my father acts as a sign in a clothing store. I patted Clarivan on the back. Just hang in there a little bit more. When this is over, there will be no one who doesn't know the name Clarivan Pellet. The Pellet Company, named after him, will be famous throughout the empire. We followed the person in charge through a soft carpeted passage and entered the inner room. Security was tight enough to open several locks. When the door opened, bright lights were visible from where the jewels were displayed. I pressed down on my pounding chest and looked around at the things in the glass display as if nothing were wrong. I've only heard of the specials inside Ivan, it's my first time seeing them in person. Are you looking for any jewelry in particular? I looked all over the shelves for the object that was intended to be here. Then the man put out a cushion with several jewels in front of me. How about this? I looked at the things and looked at the man again. I felt like I was going to laugh. You're ignoring me, man. I was off guard for a while because I brought him to the inner room. The white dot gloved manager showed me only big things but the cutting was terrible or the purity of the jewels was terrible. The man was testing my eye now. It looks big and colorful at first glance, so if you don't have an eye, you'll buy it without knowing it's bad. Maybe I looked funny because I was young. I spoke to the man standing with a brazen face. But I didn't express anger or displeasure. I said in a way that I would just show generosity and turn a blind eye to his mistakes. Let me give you another chance. Bring the right stuff. Okay. The man lowered his gaze and bowed politely. No, I'll see for myself and choose. I said that and walked slowly in front of the display case. And it wasn't long before I could find it. That one. Jewelry is placed in the middle of the specials, in the most luminous place. Unlike other objects which are a bit dull and monotonous, it is light green peridot that enhances the beauty of the gemstone to its maximum with its smooth and fine cut. The creator of that work, is he here now? I'd like to see him. How can I? No, that's a little difficult. I knew it would come out like that. Lord of Ivan can't make it easy to meet such a cherished craftsman. So I prepared something. I looked at Clarivan, half step aside. As I had said before, Clarivan took a step forward. Let me introduce you again. Clarivan Pellet, the director of Galahan Clothing Store and Pellet Company. Ah. The person in charge blinked in surprise. A man in charge of a Galahan clothing store who he openly ignored. I'm sure his heart is pounding with surprise. Clarivan demanded in a low, cold voice as if to avenge a moment ago. Would you please tell the craftsman who polished this gem that I would like to meet him? Asterisk asterisk asterisk, who wants to meet me? Crowley, who was working in the studio upstairs of the Ivan store, was annoyed with his wrinkled eyes. He's in charge of the Galahan clothing store. Why would such a person want to meet me? 
I do not know. Sheesh. Crowley, who hates being interrupted most, took off his apron while spouting abuse. After all, the person in charge of the Galahan clothing store was in a position to be reckoned with. It was a young girl and a tall man with fierce eyes who greeted Crowley, who came down to the room where the specials were gathered. Crowley ignored the child and approached the man and greeted him. I heard you were looking for me. It was only in Ivan that Crowley was treated no less than a nobleman, but anyway he was a commoner. In addition, Clarivan was in charge of the Galahan clothing store, which is said to be making all of the empire's money alone these days. Crowley, famous for his firm personality, also took off his hat and bent down. Nice to meet you, Mr. Crowley. I'm Clarivan Pellet. But when the man, who seemed to have one personality, shook hands with a sad smile, he reached out his hand. Oh, yeah. Crowley held the hand together at first glance. I'm sorry to interrupt you, you must be busy. There's something I really want to say to you face to face. It was the first time to be treated with respect by a noble after moving to capitals, where a good doctor is located, to cure his granddaughter's illness. It's been a while, so it's a little awkward, but because he felt recognized as a craftsman, so the irritation, because his work was disturbed, had melted away. I've heard the name of Ivan's master craftsman. So I'd like to ask Crowley for a request. That's a little difficult. Crowley said, waving his hands. In fact, the schedule was tight, but Crowley was lazy. And it was clear that the result of a request from a noble would be followed by an endless line of requests later. Ivan's jewelry work alone is full. Crowley knew how to defeat the aristocrats who wanted to ask this kind of work. But this is a great opportunity for Crowley. If this old man were a little young, he would have had the strength. I'm sorry. Such. Crowley coughed slyly, and Clarivan couldn't push any further and was speechless. Hmm. At that time, a girl who was looking at jewelry alone in the corner coughed loudly. As if it was a sign, the momentum of Clarivan, which had been softened, rose again. I know you were busy, but I hope you'll consider it, Mr. Crowley. So I've already scheduled. Crowley was slightly annoyed. He didn't seem to give up easily. He vented his accumulated anger. Actually, my granddaughter is ill. Ah. I have to take care of her, Lord Pellet. Please forgive me. The granddaughter was treated by doctors, and she was growing well, but this excuse was the perfect excuse to refuse. As expected, Clarivan was speechless. I'm going back to the workshop. Take a look. How about a gemstone you've never handled before? It was a girl who coughed a little while ago. Young noble lady. It was because what a noble child of the same age as his granddaughter said hurt his pride as a craftsman. There's no jewel this old man hasn't honed yet. I don't think so. Oh, well, there isn't. Can you take responsibility for that? A smiling face is so mean. What would you do if I, and Clarivan here, brought you a gemstone you've never seen before? That doesn't exist in the first place. If that exists, would you like to challenge yourself? Cha, challenge. Ha. A challenge to this Crowley, who didn't miss a single gem he hadn't honed. He didn't know who the tough little girl was, but the girl scratched Crowley's pride very well. His wrinkled face was red, and his mustache fluttered. Yeah, that's great. Crowley said, stretching out his bent back and banging his chest. If you have that kind of jewelry, I'll work on it in a row. The girl, who was looking at Crowley with a hmm sound, squinted as if she didn't trust him and asked. Are you betting on your honor as a craftsman? Plus, well, I will. At the moment, Crowley bets his pride on what he considered to be more important than his life. Good. I said that and smiled like before. Crowley flinched his shoulders, somehow a chill ran along his spine. 